Hi, have you ever asked yourself the question, what would you be doing if the world was already vegan? My name is Lee Chantal and I'm going to share with you um, my journey of what happened um, when I had a little bit of a breakdown, when I asked myself that question and reflected on it and the breakthrough that came from that. So I hope you enjoy my story. This is about a four part process. So I'll just go through each part one at a time. And the first part in my um, journey was um, a breakdown. So about a year ago, I was in a place called Apiano or Epan, which is in Italy, in the northern area. And um, I was there with Jean-Paul and I was having a beautiful time. We were doing a lot of outdoor activities and I was having a great time. At this time, I was also president of Vegetarian Vegan Society of Queensland, which we call VVSQ. And I'd been voted in as president. I also had some other committee members. And um, I'd run um, not-for-profits before. Quite a few of you might know about the not-for-profit environmental awareness group, Green Earth Group that I founded and ran for five or so years and we put on um, Brisbane's first vegan festival in 2010. Anyway, so I had experience about not-for-profits and I had been let down by a lot of people who said they would help um, at Green Earth times and so I was doing, I was doing VVSQ I'd given it about a year just to see who would actually come through on what they say and I had hoped that a lot of the groups we'd all be able to work together and be able to um, make some things happen in Queensland and um, when I was away it was a lot harder to organize things and when I was away we had our magazine to work on and it was quite stressful I was traveling I, I was on my European adventures which were about three months and I was giving a lot of talks throughout um, England in particular at vegan events and um, a lot of my time was travel so at least one or two days would be travel time and then I had um, my work as well and and I had to juggle everything and it was quite hard. So when I was in Italy, I realized that um, some things were a bit lacking. And um, there was a few th people who weren't really pulling their weight back in the group. And I was speaking to my secretary, Lyndon, and um, we were having a good chat. And he pretty much expressed to me um, he sort of apologised for stuff that we hadn't, they hadn't done and some other people hadn't done and it was as though he had um, just expressed what I was feeling before I even knew that I was feeling that or understood I was feeling that and on him saying that to me I um, just completely lost it and completely broke down and couldn't stop crying for many, many hours. And um, and if you know me, you know I'm not a crier and um, I'm not very good with expressing emotions. And um, so that was quite um, different for me. And that day, Jean-Paul and his friend and I, we went on a big hike up some mountain. Um, it was a beautiful area there. And um, yeah, just the day I was like a bit of a zombie I couldn't I couldn't really feel much stuff and I just was trying to maybe process what had happened so um, I guess the next part in the journey is probably um, the sort of talking about things and um, reflecting conversations and in particular conversations about feelings which um, I've been working on the past few years so um, I talked to a lot of my friends about what had happened, about how I was feeling and a lot of my vegan friends in particular who had been vegan for say 20 years like me so there was a lot of people who have been doing the same thing for a long time and a lot of us are just feeling a bit overwhelmed by things and maybe not that happy with the way things are going and um, just realizing there's still a lot of work to do and we thought we'd done a lot of it already. So I'm having chats with a few of my vegan friends and one in particular, um, his name's Alex and he runs the Vegetarian Guides in London and he asked me a question. 
and he said, what would you be doing if the world was already vegan? And it like stopped my world. Like my friend Hugo goes, <laughs> my, my mind was blown. And um, it was, I felt as though all time and space stood still for that particular moment. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, what would I actually be doing if, if I wasn't doing all this volunteer work I've been doing for 20 years? And I, and I said to Alex, I said, oh, you know, I'd be doing more, um, more outdoors stuff. I'd be, you know, using more physical sort of stuff because, you know, on the computer all the time, sitting down all the time. And I'd be um, enjoying myself. I'd be able to not think about having to come home and do this, be able to have weekends off. And, you know, I said, I'd, I'd love to be one of those people that just goes home of a weekend and binge watches a program. You know, that would be cool. <laughs> Maybe for one weekend, let's be honest. Um, and then, um, and yeah, just creative stuff. Like I haven't been doing any of my music stuff years and I'd love to get back into music, I'd love to get into my creative stuff like my lettering and um, poetry and writing more and um, I also you know would love to start dating more cute boys so um, I was telling Alex all the things I'd like to do and he said to me um, yeah we were just having a conversation about that sort of stuff and I realized that um, they're the things I'd like to do and I wasn't doing any of them. And if they were all the things I wanted to do or enjoyed doing, did I actually enjoy the stuff that I was doing? And the answer was pretty, pretty clear, but it took me a while. Um, and the answer was no. I haven't been enjoying the stuff I've been doing for many years. It was just sort of automatic. And um, so that was a bit of a revelation for me as well. That links to part three which is reflection and I started reflecting about these sort of things so um, you know years ago when I first went vegan so 21 years ago now um, I needed to be a speak a spokesperson I needed to help you know with my vivalavegan.net website I needed to get the message out there as people people didn't even know what a vegan was people didn't know how to pro, you know pronounce the name even and um, you know people asked me to talk all the time because not many people wanted to talk and um, you know I've always enjoyed speaking and I've always been confident in um, public sort of arenas based on my music history and um, so yeah I just I had been doing that for many many years and um, with these sort of reflections and I feel, you know, travel is such a, um, you know, it has such a powerful transformation ability if, you know, you go off the beaten track, if you have time for yourself, if you allow your, um, allow your mind to wander and, you know, have that sort of isolation and not be continually um, connected to things that can distract you. So. I, you know, I always love that about about travel in particular, train trips and long distance things where I can just read my book or I can just listen to music and just think about stuff and look outside the window and I love that. Anyway, this is over a period of time, this whole thing too. It's probably taken about a year to be honest, the whole sort of thing. Um, and I read this book, so I, I, I love reading, it's one of my favourite things and um, I had my... Um, European adventures which were about three months and then um, I just wanted to go to Ubud in Bali one of the islands in Indonesia it's one of my favorite sort of places and um, I managed to do that for a month before coming home as one of the festivals I was organizing had been cancelled and um, I read a book there at the time and it was a I can't remember what it was called um, it's, I've shared it online a while back. I'll put it. I'll put it on here. But um, I read this book, and it was mostly like a um, business training for staff, and it was talking about all these different um, procedures and how to work out things. And the main thing I got for it um, was there was this one thing, and it was called pause, consider, decide. 
and that's really helped me since then and um, in particular with um, not eating desserts and giving up sugar and um, it makes me pause for a moment and consider do I really want to do this um, is this beneficial to what I'm trying to achieve and then you decide um, based on a conscious decision and um, you know it, like a psychological sort of thing as well you, you're using your executive functions in your brain so like the prefrontal cortex that's helping you actually make conscious decisions instead of just the um, automated responses that we're used to like I was used to eating food okay have something sweet afterwards just automatic that's what you sort of do and um, you know that autopilot autopilot sort of options so this made me um, assess things that I wanted to do and who who I was as a person what I wanted to to be going forward and I realized one of the things I wanted to do was to start studying and um, to do psychology and I'd wanted to do this um, many years ago um, when I studied naturopathy I it was out of naturopathy and psychology and I ended up doing naturopathy because it was a shorter course and you know a bit younger then so you do the easiest sort of thing but anyway I feel like I'm full circle now for that so um, I realized that um, if, if I wanted to study, some things would have to change. And when I was in Indonesia, I actually was accepted into my course. So um, I realized, and they said, you know, um, to do, to study full time, there's four courses and you need to um, put 10 hours aside for each course. So that's 40 hours I needed in my week. And I realistically didn't even have like two hours spare. So I started thinking about what needed to, to give fourth part of my story which is where everything all magically works together and fits together quite well was my breakthrough um, which for me was prioritizing and saying no so um, when I worked out about that I was going to be studying I needed to make space so the first thing I decided was I was going to retire from being the president of VVSQ and I was also going to retire as Lee Chantel vegan spokesperson and stop doing as much of my volunteer stuff I've been doing for 20 years. Um, and the the I I had this in my head. I've been I'd been talking to quite a few friends about it while I was away as well. But to put it into practice was a bit different. So my first challenge was. Um, my friend wanted me to um, help her with a vegan restaurant in um, Semenyak in Bali and I was really keen because I love Bali and then I um, just realized wow this is a lot more work than I can give um, and I don't want to do this I want to prioritize my study and I said no and it was pretty hard but then it felt awesome when i said it and when she was you know okay cool um and then that was it and then another friend asked me to speak at her um her um vegan spoke speaking event and i also said no and the more i said no the better i felt and the more um stuff was lifted from my shoulders and it was very freeing it was pretty awesome to feel that actually so I became a bit addicted to um saying no to things that i would have said yes to previously like whenever someone asked whenever someone said oh there's this vegan event you should speak i'd be like yep yeah, cool count me in rah, rah, rah. um and yeah everything had just it just took over and there's so many more vegan events now so there's just so many things to do and um, I just came, I also came to the realization that, um, you know, I didn't need to be as, um, as vocal or as prominent in the movement as I had been for years because there's so many other awesome people who are doing things. There's so many people who love, you know, taking videos of themselves or posting selfies online. Like I'm just not into that sort of thing at all. And, um, you know, they're really good at it. They've got the passion. They're not maybe as jaded about things, um, as I am now. And they're not as, um, 
everything's new you know when you meet people you know I meet new vegans and they're like oh my god I just tried this vegan chicken and you're like oh yeah I had that 20 years ago <laughs> and you're, you um, start to feel a bit like I don't know jaded I guess is the best word and you see the same sort of issues wherever you are in the world wherever you go to whatever event or whatever group um, it's the same type of people that have the same type of issues that are and arguing and having just dramas just for the sake of it you know I think um veganism and the movement and animal rights movement was meant to be inclusive and I think it was at the beginning but nowadays it's also excluding a lot of people instead of including people so I don't really like to be part of those sort of things um when I came home um it was the end of I think it was the end of September because I was home I was home for the AFL Grand Final, so it was September sometime, and and then I had an event to to put on with um, my new secretary Josh. We were doing education in Brisbane, and then I was um, studying, and I started studying at the end of October. Um, I'm studying um, my Bachelor of Psychology Honours at Griffith University and um, I plan to be a lecturer in cyber psychology and that sort of thing is my passion. And it was really, really important for me to prioritise that because I want to do well, I have to get into honours to then do my PhD. So I have to get really good marks and I have been getting really good marks. and. I um, yeah, just needed to focus on that for the next few years. So my focus was then and still is now um, studies, fitness, love swimming, love my Pilates reformer machine, um, uh, selected friends and family, um, and what was the other thing? And more creative stuff. So the creative stuff gets pushed aside with studies sometimes, but you know, you're trying to get into the music more, focusing more on my lettering and my writing and my poetry, and just focusing on those things over and over and just steadily working at my goals and the things I want to achieve. So I feel I feel pretty good now actually. I feel like um I've I, I wanted to share this but I really needed to reflect and understand how I felt about a lot of stuff because it takes me a while to um, under, like to know that I'm feeling something and know the emotion and then it takes me a while to reflect on, on that emotion too. So um, it took me like almost a year honestly to process all this stuff and it has this when I'm making this video is when is like pretty much a year to the date when I had my breakdown originally in Italy so um, I just I feel I feel really good because I've said no and I've taken a step back and I'm still doing a few things here and there but it's not my primary focus and that feels really good and it feels great to do things for me for once and for things that will set myself up financially instead of just putting a time and energy into mon and money into volunteer work and um, I just really hope that people can learn from um, what I experienced and I see some of my close friends in particular a lot of a lot of the women but just a few men as well who um, are, are on their way to breakdowns and you know the, the signs normally for me it was putting on weight and um, just not exercising enough not getting out and feeling like I was the only one who could help things and I was the only one who could do stuff and there's just so many awesome people out there who all have different skills and everyone can help out as best they can and um, when you start thinking that you're the only one nothing's going to get done without without you that that's a pretty telltale sign. So I just encourage everyone to focus more on exercise, in particular outside, and to get away from your computer, stop being so distracted by, you know, technology. And there's just so many negative people online and don't get drawn into their drama. It's just, you know, there's people 
online who have have some problems you know they they don't maybe have many friends or they don't have people to support them and you know online's the time where they get to be whoever they want to be and sometimes that's not nice and um, we don't need to go down to their level I've seen a lot of trolls online and I've seen a lot of vegans just attacking them for attacking someone else and everyone's just being a bit negative lately and you don't have to be online one of um, the best things I did was to delete my personal Facebook profile and that was five or so years ago and I feel awesome from it you know I just go online for my pages and my clients pages and just run things when I have to you know Monday Wednesday Fridays limit yourself turn off your phone don't look at your phone all the time um, and these are these are things I'm really passionate about all the online stuff and the technology and just be aware so many people just aren't aware of what they're doing and just be conscious like make conscious decisions that's what it's about this is like my sort of transformation too it's making conscious decisions about where I'm heading in life what I want to do what my goals are what I'm trying to achieve the people who I want in my life the things that I do with my time the things I prioritize you know just consciously be aware of how to use you know online media how to use the internet how to spend your time and I hope I hope that helps you because it's really helped me I pretty much burned everything I was before and I created um, a new self so I'm pretty impressed with this version of Lee Chantel and um, if you haven't met this version um, I look forward to meeting you again soon and um, I hope that you're doing what you love and you're doing the things that help you in your life that you actually bring you joy and you know know that all the stuff with the, the animals and veganism animal rights and people associated with our movement we're never going to be able to do everything the world is not going to be vegan and that's okay you know we do it the best we can and I feel for me um, non-attachment and non-judgments really helped me so have conversations with people you know do the best you can with your skill sets and the things that you love doing and promote veganism in the best way you know how and um, don't be attached to an outcome I hope you can you know ask yourself the, that this question that the whole video is about what would you be doing if the world was already vegan and i hope that you do some of those things with your life and i hope you have a great a great day i hope you have a great week and a great year and um thanks for listening if you got this far that's awesome and yeah see um uh, lee chantel on um all the social media and viva la and you know sometimes i actually share stuff online if i'm not busy with studies take care everyone and um lots of love